Welcome back, you guys. Uh, we have another video. Today we're going to talk more about limits. So this is the fourth video in a series about limits. Um, we're going to talk about vertical asymptotes and how limits apply to those. Now, I don't want to change anything you have learned about vertical asymptotes in the past. And maybe you've learned about them in uh, terms of taking a function. So, for example, let's look at this function we have here, 3x squared over x squared minus 4. We looked at this one in the previous video about horizontal asymptotes. And uh, now we learned, we hopefully learned, that to find a vertical asymptote, you took the function 3x squared and you factor the denominator, x plus 2, x minus 2. And we learned that one of two things is going to happen when we have factors in the denominator. We learned that case one, we might have a hole, and that happens when the factors cancel out. And when we cancel those factor, we are le left with what's called the extended function. And we can evaluate the limit of that. And that's the, that's the location of the whole, that limit. So remember, uh, if we have an extended function, if the factors cancel, both sides for the limit to exist are approaching the same y value. They want to become the same thing. But if there's a hole there, the function never gets there, but the limit is what, what would it become? What does it want to be? You know, whether it actually gets there or not is a different question. Now, the second thing that's going to happen is you're going to have a vertical asymptote. So one way or another, we have a discontinuity. Because remember, to be continuous, you have to be able to trace your pencil along the function and never pick it up. Now, at a hole, you'd have to pick it up and jump over the hole. At a vertical asymptote, you could still be approaching a value, but to get to another branch, you'd have to jump over the asymptote to continue. So a vertical asymptote is what we call an infinite discontinuity because what happens is um, as we approach that value, and here we're going to have two vertical asymptotes, one at x equals negative 2 and one at x equals 2. Because what's happening there, and the reason we have a discontinuity is because 2 and negative 2 are not a part of the domain of this function. The definition of the domain of a function are all the numbers you can put in and get an answer back with. If we put in 2, we get an undefined answer. It's not a part of the domain. Negative 2, same deal. We get a 0 with a denominator. A number divided by 0 doesn't exist. It's, it's an undefined value. And so it's technically not in the domain. So anytime we approach values that are not in the domain, that can't be plugged in and return answers, well, then we have some sort of discontinuity. So here we've got two vertical asymptotes, and you found them this way in the past, I'm assuming, based on what I know about prerequisite skills and things like that. You probably have found them this way, and that's fine. That's how I want you to find them. So vertical asymptotes are found by factoring the denominator and considering what makes the denominator 0. Okay. Now keep in mind, holes will do the same thing. Factors cancel though, so that whatever makes the denominator zero, there's also one in the numerator. So you have to be careful. As long as if they don't cancel out, well then you're going to have a vertical asymptote there. So let's talk about what's happening and let's look at the graph and we're going to relate what we've learned in the past to now what we're learning. So here's the graph of that function. We looked at it in the previous video. And you can see that yes, yes indeed, we had, there's our horizontal asymptote we talked about previously. And if you look closely, right here at positive and negative 2, by golly, there are some asymptotes to be had there. Now, let's see. There we go. Now, what's happening on the graph? Well, in terms of a limit, remember a limit says as x is approaching a number, what's happening to y? So let's, let's trace this graph. As x is approaching 2, let's say from the left. So as x, the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of my function, as I'm going along, do, 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 following, minding my own business, as I approach negative 2 from the left, all of a sudden my function shoots up. And so if you were going to say what the limit was here, you would say that Oh, it shoots up and it's approaching a positive infinity because it's going up. So it's possible that we can approach a value and have a limit equal to infinity. 
You can also say it does not exist. Now, there we go. So technically, the limit doesn't exist because it's approaching infinity, and infinity isn't a real number. It's a concept. We're going to talk more about that later on in the course. Now, as we're approaching from the other side, right, so I should put two negatives in there. Sorry about that. The limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right. Now it's a little different. So remember, here's negative 2. As we approach it from the right, follow my arrow down. As we approach it from the right, I'm not going to positive infinity. I'm going to negative infinity. Let's look at the other asymptote. The limit as x approaches 2 from the right and the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, what are the limits? Well, 2 from the right, so that's coming from the right-hand side. So from the right, I'm going up. From the left, I'm going down. So from the right, I'm going up to positive infinity. On the left, I'm going down. Now. We know that there are vertical asymptotes there. So now we want to take this information, we want to establish a definition. So how do I know, based on limits, that a vertical asymptote appears? Because it's kind of janky to, to refer to like, oh, well, when I factored it, it didn't cancel, so there's a vertical asymptote there. That's great, but now we're in big kid math. We're going to hike up our pants, and we're going to establish a definition based on mathematics and based on limits. So. When I want to describe these vertical asymptotes in terms of their limits, I want to have a de definition. And we saw that at those vertical asymptotes, one side or the other had to approach infinity. And this function is unique because on either side it approached positive infinity and then negative infinity. That doesn't have to happen. You don't have to have both. But at least on one side or the other of that number, you're going to approach an infinity. So this or is a really important thing here. You don't need both. Same thing with the horizontal asymptotes. You don't need both sides approaching the same number for that horizontal asymptote definition. For the vertical, you don't need both sides approaching the same infinity. They don't even need to both approach an infinity. Sometimes you're going to have a function uh, like natural log, for example. When you graph natural log, there's a vertical asymptote, and there's nothing on the other side of the vertical asymptote. So if you graph natural log of x, there's a vertical asymptote at 0, and the graph is only on the right side. So you can Verify that by graphing it if you want. But the idea is um, if you have a limit and it's got to be right-handed or left-handed, so on the right side or the left side, if you're approaching either infinity, that's the definition of a vertical asymptote. So here's how the AP exam might phrase it and might ask you for definitions, because remember, definitions are very important. If x is 3 and x is negative 3 are vertical asymptotes, what can we say about the limit as x approaches 3 for f of x. Well, it must, let's go ahead and not write with a highlighter. There we go. So we'll say it must be either, oh, actually, let's take that back. It doesn't exist. Because the limit as x approaches 3 from the right or the limit as x approaches 3 from the left must be one of these infinities. One of them has to be an infinity. So there is no limit at a vertical asymptote. It just doesn't exist. Now, the right and left-handed limits are approaching infinities, technically approaching infinity and does not exist are the same. But legitimately, the limit at 3 doesn't exist because the function it's not approaching a value. So let's talk about this next example. Consider 1 over x squared. Find its vertical asymptotes and justify your answer. So if you want to pause the video and uh, see if you can find them on your own and then write it out in terms of the definition of a vertical asymptote, now's a great time to do that. So let's take a look. Find its vertical asymptotes. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that denominator. I'm going to set it equal to 0, and I'm going to solve and say, well, x equals 0 is a vertical asymptote. Now, justify my answer, I'm going to say the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of 1 over x squared. Oh, well, as we approach 1 over 0 from the right, now 1 divided by 0, when I use that substitution method, 
Anytime I have a number divided by zero, I'm going to interpret that as being an infinity. It's either positive or negative infinity. So one over a zero as I'm evaluating my limits, I'm going to think of that as being infinity. I'm also going to think about the limit coming from the left. So as x approaches zero from the left, one over x squared, same thing's going to happen. I'm plugging in a smaller and smaller number and squaring it. So one divided by a super duper tiny number is going to be an infinity. So because this is what's happening, by definition, x equals zero is a vertical asymptote. Okay. Now, last example here, we want to talk about what's the limit as x is approaching zero. Um, well, we talked about the limit existing. So we said from the right, from the left, it's approaching infinity. So let's real quick take a peek at the graph and see what this function actually looks like. So when we graph it in our calculator, here's what we see. And we see that uh, we are on the left-hand side approaching zero, going to positive infinity on the right-hand side, going to positive infinity. And so you might say to yourself, well, gee, the definition in order for a limit to exist, the limit as x approaches a from the right for a function has to be the same as the limit as x approaches a from the left, then the limit as x approaches a overall must be that same number. So this is the definition of a limit existing. You need these things to be true. So, okay, you might be thinking to yourself, well, gee, it's, it's, they're both the same. It's approaching infinity. Therefore, it must be infinity. And that's, a, that's, that's reasonable logic that I would expect you guys to have. But I'm going to tell you that it's not right. Because here's the thing. Infinity is a concept. Not all infinities are the same. So just because it's approaching infinity on the left and just because it's approaching infinity on the right doesn't mean it's approaching the same infinity at the same rate. Now this function may be, you know, maybe. But the point is, whenever you have functions approaching infinities, not all infinities are the same. So this whole rule about the limit existing doesn't hold true when infinity is involved. So the limit as x approaches 0 of the function, we have to say, and I'm going to use my rainbow pen because it's that important, this limit doesn't exist. So this rule doesn't hold true when infinity is involved. So make sure that you make a note of that and understand that limits approaching infinity have a slightly different set of rules. And I know that some of this can be complicated and that's a lot of information to be thrown at you. Um, so I want you to stay encouraged. I hope this video uh, was helpful for you. And remember, mastery is not expected on the first try. Mastery is something that happens when you see it. You see it again, and then in a couple of weeks you come right back to it. And when you see it again, it cements in your brain. Learning is a long process, and so do not feel discouraged if you're not mastering this concept or if something trips you up. I want you to approach every challenge. Um, with a positive attitude and just know that sometimes you're going to get tripped up and that's okay. Mastery is not expected at this point. Um, it's going to take some time. So keep at it. You can do this. Uh, I'm here for you and uh, you've got this.